Nova, the Swiss army knife of production sound. Recorder, mixer, Zaxnet audio timecode and transmitter remote control distribution. Two slots for UHF receivers with built-in mic plexer for antenna distribution and a high-Q tracking front on filter. All with the most intuitive, user-friendly interface on the planet. But this is how Nova changes everything. With two MRX414 receiver modules, the Nova receives audio from eight separate transmitters. That's the power of a 25-pound sound bag in one unit that's lighter than most laptops. We've made Nova incredibly easy to navigate through. The front panel is equipped with five infinity encoders on five banks, so you can control 25 sources and custom configure them to your workflow. Plus, each of these encoders has three instantly accessible functions, fader control, input trim, or Zaxnet remote control trim. There are also quick keys surrounding the LCD display whose functions change according to what screen you're working in. Nova has 12 AES inputs with power for two AES-42 microphones, six analog inputs, dual compact flash card recording, six AES outputs, five analog outputs, and ultra low power consumption. Nova contains all of Zaxcom's innovations. Full integration with Zaxcom Digital Recording Wireless. The MRX414s receive audio from transmitters that are simultaneously transmitting and recording at the same time. Zaxnet, to distribute IFB audio and timecode throughout set and to remotely control transmitter parameters. Neverclip, a dual A to D converter that seamlessly switches to give you a dynamic range of 140 dB. Audition and re-record. Whether your talent goes out of range or you miss a take, you're completely covered. Just rebroadcast from your transmitters and re-record your take. Auto pick frequencies. The Nova can scan the RF spectrum and automatically select the clearest frequencies and re-freak your transmitters to match. Nova setup. Let's get Nova setup out of the box. First, we'll need to get the Nova power. It runs on any standard DC power source, 10 to 18 volts, which will connect to the Nova via a four pin Hyros connector. Once connected, flip the power switch to the on position. Let's go over how to control Nova. The front panel has an LCD, five infinity encoders, a menu pot that you can twist and press, a headphone knob, function buttons, and soft keys. Take note that some of the soft keys on the front of Nova have two functions. The primary function is what's written on the key. The secondary function is written above. To access the secondary function, you press and hold the button. The use of the six function keys around the touch screen varies based on which menu screen you're in. In the home screen, the star key can be pressed to toggle between home screen views. In this overview, we're going to use the screen showing our mono mix and iso tracks. Let's start by setting up time and date, which is located in the timecode menu. TC is written above the bank key, so we're going to press and hold it to access the timecode menu. You'll see six menus pop up on the LCD display. Click F8 for next page. Set time date is the last choice, so using the menu pot, scroll down, then click on set time date. Once you're set here, click the back button. While we're in timecode setup, double check to see that your frame rate is set correctly for your shoot. In terms of timecode, we're using Nova's internal timecode generator based on our time of day. You can also jam timecode via the BNC connector on the side of the unit. Next, let's set up our media. All Zaxcom gear records their primary audio in a proprietary format called MARF, which stands for Mobile Audio Recording Format. MARF protects you from losing any audio in case power is lost. Your mirrored audio is what you'll be handing off to post. This is generally a polyphonic wave file, but Nova can also generate an MP3 or mono wave files. Grab a CF card and insert it into the primary slot face down and cycle the power. Press and hold the five button to get into the media menu and select primary card. Then scroll down and select format primary card. Nova will then give you the option to format the card by pressing the star key, which is right above the menu pot. The time it'll take to format your card will vary based on the size of the card. Once Nova tells you formatting is complete, cycle the power. To get back to where we were, press and hold the five button, choose primary card, then select choose primary folder. Select the folder you'd like to record into, Hit the back button, 
then scroll down and click on the Edit Current Folder name. This is where we'll rename the folder. In the keyboard screen, you can navigate using either the function key surrounding the LCD or by using the menu pot. If you press and hold the menu pot, it toggles between upper and lower case letters. When you twist the menu pot, the cursor moves horizontally. And if you click and twist the pot, the cursor moves vertically. Once you've got the folder named, hit OK. This will take you back to the primary CF menu. Take a second CF card and insert it into the mirror slot face up and select Mirror Settings. Scroll to the very bottom of the menu and select Format Mirror Card where you'll be prompted to press the star key. Once it's complete, you hit the back button to exit. From here, we select Folder to Mirror and choose the same folder you're using on the primary card and hit back. Check that the file type and resolution are set appropriately. Now you're ready to mirror. Turn it on by clicking mirror mode and select either on or continuous. On will mirror in between takes and continuous is recording to both media at the same time. When you're done recording sound for the day, make sure mirroring is 100% complete and don't forget to include a sound report. Click write sound report and you're good to go. Nova routing, fader assign and record enable. What is routing? Routing is assigning audio sources to record tracks, a mix track, or an output bus. Zaxcom's mixer recorders are unique in that you can route any input to any track or output. In this video, we're going to route five channels of audio, four being received on an internal MRX414 receiver module, and an analog boom to both tracks and faders. We'll start with routing the tracks. Press and hold the trim button to get to the track assign menu. There are three different input sources audio can be assigned from. Analog inputs, digital inputs, or radio mic receiver inputs. You can toggle between these sources via the function keys F9, F10, and F11. We're going to start with F11, which corresponds with our MRX414 receiver modules. Using the menu knob to scroll through the routing matrix, you can enable cross points by pressing the menu knob in the cross point box you want to set. X stands for post fader track, P stands for pre-fader tracks. Typically, you'd send all of your inputs to a mono track post-fader, since this is your mono mix track. We're using four receiver inputs and one analog input. So we're going to enable radio mic receivers one through four onto track one here, then press F9 and place an X on analog input one into record track one. Next, we'll assign our individual inputs to pre-fader ISO tracks. We'll start with our receiver inputs. Press F11, and click on the menu pot twice to place a P for pre-fader on each track. Now keep in mind that track one is our mix track, so we'll be starting by routing radio mic input one to record track two, radio mic input two to record track three, radio mic input three to track four. Then press F8 to view tracks five through eight and route radio input four to record track five. You can also push and hold the menu pot as you scroll through to move vertically through the menu. When you're done with assigning receivers, hit F9 and route boom on analog input one to record track six. Remember, you'll have six tracks in use. Track one is your post-fader mix track and tracks two through six as your pre-fader ISO tracks. Now we're ready to set up the faders. It looks like there are only five faders on the Nova, but each of these five faders has three functions and can be assigned to one of five banks. So really you have 75 functions accessible at the push of a button. The three functions are fader levels, input trim, and Zaxnet gain. This may sound daunting, but it's so easy to set up. To get into fader assign, you press the F10 key or press the main menu pot, then select fader assign. Just like in the track routing screen, you can easily switch between analog, digital, and radio mic receiver inputs via the F9, F10, and F11 keys. On the top is where you toggle between the five banks via the F7 and F8 keys. The default screen is your analog inputs. Along the top row, you'll see the mic line inputs one through four and the two additional return inputs. In this video, we're going to set up four wireless transmitters and one hardwired boom on fader bank one. Let's start with our four wireless labs. Press F11 for receivers, then place an X for radio mic receiver input one on fader one, input two on fader two, input three on fader three, and input four on fader four. Then we'll press F9 to return back to analog inputs. Then press and hold the menu pot to scroll vertically and assign analog input one to fader five. 
Now that these faders are assigned, let's go over how to use them. Natively, each of the faders are controlling the mix fader level. If you hit the trim button, you're controlling the input gain of the input assigned to that fader. You can see the trim adjustment on both the LCD screen where small circles scroll horizontally in the corresponding track and by the LED position shifting as you move the fader. When you hit the Zaxnet button, you're controlling the input gain for the transmitter that's associated with the unit ID assigned to that input. This is also shown on the LED position around the corresponding encoder knob. Now we can set up to record. Let's enable the tracks we want to record to. Press and hold 3 to get to the record enable matrix. Using the menu key, place an X to arm the tracks you want to record. For our setup, we're arming tracks 1 through 6 on the primary card. Be sure to always have the corresponding mirror tracks enabled. I have them all checked here as a precaution. Any track not in use won't mirror anyway. Now that we've armed the tracks to record, let's name them. Go into the main menu, select track names, click on the track name to change it. We'll start with track 1 being our mono mix, tracks 2 through 5 being our labs, and track 6 being our boom. Nova Auto Pick Frequencies Whether you're starting your day or start taking hits halfway through, within minutes, the Nova can automatically scan the RF spectrum, select the clearest channels, and refreak your transmitters, with no need to disturb talent. This Nova has two MRX414s in it, so we can receive audio wirelessly from eight separate transmitters. We've already got these routed, so let's begin by pressing F9 from the home screen to go into the RX menu. In the receiver screen, you see all eight receive channels. On each channel, you see the transmitter's unit code, the transmitter's name, the frequency it's currently on, the Zaxnet gain setting, the transport status, which is play, record, or stop, the battery level, and signal strength. In the background of the track itself, you can see the audio level. Let's go to our scan. Press F7 to go into the scan menu. The Nova has a built-in mic plexer for filtering out unwanted RF on adjacent frequencies like walkie-talkies or other transmitting devices. This filtering helps give your wireless great range. So before we do a frequency scan, we need to choose the 35 megahertz window we'll be working in. To do that, scroll to the center frequency and use the menu pot to make your selection. In this video, we're choosing a center frequency of 540 megahertz. Now click the F6 key to start your scan. This quickly shows you the surrounding RF environment. Once the scan's finished, press F9 for the Choose Frequencies menu. Here's where you can insert check marks with the menu pot for transmitters you'd like to change. Then hit F9 to let the Nova pick the clearest channels, and F11 to send the commands to refreak both your transmitters and receivers automatically. Audition and Rerecord. Audition and Rerecord is the ability to rebroadcast audio from your digital recording wireless transmitters. This can be used for when you take an RF hit or you were taking a nap and forgot to hit record. From the home screen, press and hold 2 to enter the Q menu. Then hit F9 for re-record. Use the menu knob to select the segment you want to re-record. If you need only a portion of the segment re-recorded, you can scrub through the file using the menu pot. To double check you've selected the right file, you can press F7 for audition, which will play back the file from your transmitters. When you're ready to record, you hit F6. This will rebroadcast the files from your transmitters and re-record them to the Nova. Post will see this file clearly marked with the original name plus a marker that it's a re-recorded file. At any time you want to stop re-recording, hit the stop button. Once you've re-recorded your files, be sure to hit F11 to put the transmitters back into record mode. They won't do it on their own. <laughs>